seen before and it's a work of the mind. Um, firstly, could I introduce uh, Howard Pozzo, who's going to open up the conference for a few minutes. Howard has been the chair of West Yorkshire Sports Partnership for six months now, I think. For six months, as the first independent chair of uh, uh, West Yorkshire Sports Partnership. He was, and has been a couple of times, the chair of Halifax Rugby League Club, and also managing director of Age Boss Insurance, and also holds directorships in several companies and has his own company. Please introduce Howard Thompson. Good morning. Um, I'd like to join Nigel and welcome everybody here today. Um, please know you're not going to hear too much from me, um, but like Nigel, I'll be around and uh, happy to talk to anybody who I don't know, and we'll make sure I do see everybody. Um, over the last 150 years, um, politics and sport have been very closely linked. Um, actually, in England, it was uh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer back in the Franco-Prussian War, do you believe, in 1870, um, under Gladstone as Prime Minister, who agreed for the very first time to allow some income tax revenue to be allowed to be used. And that was to employ 12 PT instructors to help the English soldiers get fit. As it appears, and I quote from the uh, government uh, source of Hansard, the soldiers were eating too much carbohydrates, consuming too much alcohol, so it couldn't fit into their uniforms. So nothing much has changed in 150 years. Um, today, the political focus and methodology has changed slightly, but irrespective of your political persuasion or views on the tactics, the fundamental aim of everybody is clearly the right one, of seeking to increase participation across sport as a whole, for reasons of health, enjoyment, and whilst ensuring at the same time that talented individuals have a real opportunity to rise to the top, and of course we need facilities to deliver that in the places where it's needed and where people can get access to them easily. Now, over the last six years, uh, despite some changes in the message on the detail of these objectives and how they're measured, the West Yorkshire Sports Partnership has moved from its initial position as, frankly, a slightly confused group of individuals to a strongly unified group of people, covering five major local authorities, all of which have immensely difficult, uh, difficult and different fundamental characteristics, all of which have slightly difficult political persuasions, and all of which have a huge range of different population requirements. And with the help of some very hard work from a number of people, some very committed individuals who have given up their time both voluntarily and as part of the paid group, it's achieved a huge amount. I would argue that the commitment shown from the West Yorkshire Sports Team and the five local authorities so far, supported strongly by Sports England, makes this partnership something of a model for others to follow. At West Yorkshire Sport, we have other targets, as the ones we're talking about today, like increasing talented athlete, athletes. Community cohesion is also important, as is reducing obesity. And during the day, we'll happily talk to you those about those two to you. But the focus of today's conference is quite clear. It's about achieving our target of getting 17,000 people across those five local authorities to participate in sport. That's 17,000 more than doing now, not just 17,000 in total. Now 17,000 does sound like a huge number, but if you break that number down by an area in Kirklees, it's only 3,100 people. And if you look at the stadium, that's a number that only fills 7.5% of the seats outside. So whilst the numbers sound big, the targets are realistic and we believe they are achievable. It will be crucial that when we develop the joint ways of developing initiatives to achieve these targets, that we follow a traditional business approach. And to my mind that means that we try a range of initiatives and a range of different approaches to fit different segments. Now, most marketing campaigns, whether they're baked beans or insurance or fitness, learn from the predecessors and their competitors. And we have to do the same. We have to make sure that we recognise what is working and frankly, what's not working, because we will make mistakes. And we have to respond quickly to ensure a positive outcome to achieve our targets. The other thing we must do is also make sure that we share best practice across the whole of the UK sports network. And listen to people like yourself in this room, who clearly know what's going on on the ground. It's very easy to sit in an office and do things, but to be out there and understand 
what participants really want. Today's conference will help you think about some of the different methods of achieving this. I would urge all of you to be active participants in the sessions, in the question and answers, and to use the time to talk to other people. We have people here from a wide range of backgrounds, and I hope that people can learn from others just by networking today. I'm sure we can learn a great deal from each other. Um, our key speaker today is someone I feel that we can all learn a great deal from, given his role. Uh, Derek Mapp is chairman of Sports England. And unlike some people involved in government agencies, um, also has an active and hectic life in the modern business world. Some would argue that in some of his business life, Derek has actually been responsible, in part, for helping ensure that we are perhaps an over-nurtured nation. He was heavily involved in the brewing industry at an earlier stage, so uh, we perhaps have that to blame, but uh, I'm sure now we've put that behind him. But it is Derek's ability to bring together the skill of running a successful business with the disciplines that that entails that have made his first year at Chair of Sport England a year which has seen the organisation achieve a refocused sense of purpose and a new sense of direction. He's also had the difficulty of having to negotiate as part of the 2007 Comprehensive Spending Review, work that's still ongoing in many areas. I'd like you to join me in welcoming Derek to the stage without taking on current position. Derek.